let me uh, pull up the Twitch chat here. Ooh, when you get hit with that pre-roll ad. Pop out. Pop it out, mate. Crappy brush for this. There we go. So we will wait a while as everybody starts to uh, pop on in. But I hope everybody's having a pretty good day today. That'll be a fun one today is uh i know when we painted the Licherino, um he was a fun exercise and sort of tinting stuff but this paint job specifically is uh big time so um definitely looking forward to it tinting tinting gold with red highlighting it up you can see her uh super shiny armor here which is a direct result of the glazing and tinting with the gold so, and we'll probably, as always, make it, uh, you know, more intense than it normally is, so. But yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm trying to think if I have anything cool that I've kind of worked on. Really, last week was just hit or miss in terms of me doing things, but... I did finally get close to finishing up this. I know you guys saw me working on this paint job. <laughs> Off and on, pretty much done. It could use a, a little bit brighter highlights here and there, but um, definitely pleased with uh, the non-metallic metal and everything. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. This is a uh, 3D print. You can tell we've got like the green tinting, the purple, the magenta, the blues. What's, what's interesting is we, we did color temperature tint tinting first. Um, so that's why, like, where you're getting the auburn shadow color and then the, I think we did auburn shadow and clear blue. Those were like the two uh, first colors. You can see that shadow here, got dust on it. But so you can see those shadows here um, across the back, whatever. And then after doing a bit more of the non-metallic metal and the golds, then we went back with magenta on the right hand side of the body um, and like the right hand side of the knee and the big uh, skull hammer. And so we did that and then coming from the left and the blue shadows, we did green. So it was like doing um, analogous colors for the tinting uh, or rather I would just say like the hue shifting, right? So just kind of like the cool little change in color that doesn't really affect the shadow. Um, so we did analogous colors for that and then we did complementary colors based upon the color temperature that we did to begin with. So it was cool. It was like a nice little um, trade-off. But this is a Patreon paint along. And then the only other difference with stuff, right? I always show this off too. Um, we started the hair on the yak. We did the cloth. The cloth was super simple. We did the nice bed roll. I love that green. This is, this is uh, clear green completely. Um, but the underneath highlight color, so the color that looks like it's the highlight green is actually tan skin, and then we just glazed green on top of that. So that's a nice little trick. And then there's purple shot underneath it, which uh, allows it to look like shadow. So um, I, I haven't really done a lot of stuff with just the straight up clear green. So that was kind of an interesting little, little twist. And then we started doing all of the hair. So as you can tell this week, our, our challenge is do as much as the hair as possible. Um, the hair, 
is, I think, again, tan skin, which is so funny. I feel like Waffle because he used skin tone, or he uses like off-whites for mixing, but so this is all just tan skin. Oh, you can actually see it right there. Um, and then we, we tint it using uh, leather, something leather. What's over here? Uh, not bronze shadow, but I think just leather tan, uh, leather brown, I believe. It's in front of me somewhere. Um, but, so that was cool. But I really like the way that all of the, uh, you know, hair and reflection is getting built out. Um, but it's, it's probably going to take us an hour or more to actually get that done. So, but today, oh, and then speaking of colors that people love. So I've been using phthalo green. I'm starting uh, Mortarian. And so here are the wings. And these are just the base colors, but, so this is clear phthalo green on top of uh, bronze shadow. That's what this nice tan color is, this bronze shadow. And I just glazed it down into the corner. So if you've ever wondered, sort of, cause everybody knows phthalo green can get super, super bright green, um, depending on a lighter color on top of it, um, or whatever, however that works, right? If there's a lighter color underneath it, it glows really bright. But when you apply it um, to a darker color, you get a really awesome result. So, um, but yeah, the, the end goal here is uh, a glowy phthalo green coming up from the inside of the body. Uh, we haven't started the body at all, but if you've never seen the miniature, um, there's the scale. So it's a big, huge boy. Um, and then we'll have this color sort of through the center and then it will shift up to a yellow, um, like a yellow ochre color. So, but excited obviously to work on that more of that will be done tomorrow so next week you'll see actually more of it will be done tomorrow and thursday so you'll see more progress into next week so but now that we've got more people here we'll go ahead and get started so i'm just grabbing dragon gold we're going to do a super solid base coat all over the mini and uh, once that's dry we'll do glazing pretty much a simple paint job today right the uh focus is mostly um just getting the glazing to be a more dramatic effect, make it look more difficult than it really is, which is like 90% of all painting. But we shall get started. Zambies, what's going on? What's going on? Is this the crappy brush? Yes, okay. I always use, cr oh, sorry, let me move that down here. I always use crappier brushes <clears throat> for metallics if possible. So the real challenge here, obviously, and I didn't zenith all this mostly because I want the uh, paints to be as metallically reflective as possible. So painting them on top of black is always a good call. If you want them to be super, super shiny, uh, you should use a gloss black, but I just literally don't own a gloss black. So I used to, but I used it up. Anytime I use gloss black primer, it's always pretty much specifically for a project. Um, and it's usually because I'm doing color shift paint, but so what I'm doing, right, is I'm applying the paint and then I'm just moving the brush up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, very close together. So that way the surface tension is as even as I can possibly get it, which should prevent us from needing a bunch of different coats, right? But we'll zoom in to get a better idea. And then once this is dry, we will begin our color tinting. I'm probably gonna use lots of heraldic red, and maybe a little bit of purple, but I'm not anticipating much. How did I do the stomach? Okay. This weekend we do have our Patreon class, so we're doing uh, for the $10 tier. We're doing a color theory class using the ReaperCon Mini uh, with the Dodo Bird from last year. So I'm excited about that. It's like Captain something in Ordo, I believe, is the miniature's name, but very excited to be getting that on the table. Um, the color theory itself is just gonna be sort of an all-encompassing thing as we as we play with analogous, complementary, different things like that. The $10 tier on Patreon is always more advanced. It usually focuses on one topic or technique, and the topic obviously is color theory. Our $5 class from this month uh, was painting cold tones, and I, I did that one for free. 
uh, for everybody to see. So if you wanted to see that, you can check the YouTube channel, you can check my Twitch if it's still there, or Facebook. Um, and we did that on Hanai, I believe is her name, the female barbarian. Uh, and I wish I still had the miniature, I would show it to you, but I actually shipped it to a patron um, last week. So that was a surprise for them. And I know they emailed me, they didn't actually have a chance to do the class. And so they were very surprised that I sent them the painted miniature because now they get to use the miniature uh, while they follow along with the class. So I always like doing little surprises like that. There are, there are a lot of people that have gotten painted miniatures for myself on Patreon that were not expecting it at all. <laughs> They'll be like, did you mean to send, did you mean to send this to me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I doubt I would mistakenly send painted things off, but you never know. You never know. I'm ignoring one of the shoulder pads. Not that it really makes a huge difference to paint it silver, but we will be painting that in silver. To this arm here. Now, wherever we have less surface area is where we don't get as good of coverage. So like the leg, right, you can tell we had a lot of room to work with, so we got really good coverage. Anywhere you start getting more detail or like a more variance of texture or shape is where you'll, you will lose some of the viscosity, but it's all right if we have to do two coats. And this color is definitely mixed, so it's just sort of how the bones metallics are when they're lighter and not dark. been working on recently let me know in the chat I know we haven't been here a while <laughs> if the mini is mostly gold was going with a black primer a bold idea no sorry to explain that if you're gonna be painting something that's metallic a black uh, under <laughs> and screamos question sorry you guys must have shown up after I started um, so if you are painting metallics and you want them to be as reflective as possible they should go on top of black if you want them to be as insanely reflective as possible, they go on top of a gloss black. And we want her to have a very, very shiny suit of, of gold aquanautic glory. So that's why we're doing that. Um, and that answers your question, Scream, about the Zenithal. I wouldn't want to do that just because it wouldn't be as bright and reflective. And I'm only doing it section by section like this. Like obviously I could slam the paint on top of the helmet at the same time as I'm doing the arm, but it allows me to move my brush in the direction of the shape itself, right? Which is how you can get better coverage every time around. Oops, that's supposed to be silver, who cares? Did I do anything on the back? No, that's all silver too, all right. But yeah, if you've ever wanted to know how to make your stuff, your metallics even more metallic -er, is that, is that the correct term? Buy a little bottle of gloss, gloss uh, black primer. Or if you don't want to buy gloss black primer and you have gloss clear coat, hit it with that when it's black and then start applying your metallics and it will be super shiny. But that's how all of the uh, color shift paints work as well, specifically for that reason. That way there's no middle pigment, it's only the different colored metallics that dry at different weights, which is what uh, separates them into shining at different angles, the more you know. Paint science. 
Or you could just be like, oh, shiny things. How's life post inoculation? It's all right. So, um, you know, the night of the first shot that I had felt kind of weird. It went away though with some ibuprofen. And then, uh, then the second shot we got first thing in the morning. And so by like, I felt okay, obviously, but I knew I would feel something. And so about lunchtime, my body started to get a little bit sore. Um, and then uh, closer to one, I started feeling even worse. And then I took, uh, you know, ibuprofen and stuff. And then two o'clock, I was like, I don't think I like, it didn't happen. And so, um, and then the next day, and then I felt pretty bad uh, towards the evening. Um, and Sydney felt okay. She got her uh, dose the same time as me. And then the next day I woke up, felt totally fine. Uh, my arm hurt a little bit and we didn't really get much sleep. That was the other thing I noticed, right? Like I kept waking up all night long and my arm hurt really bad. If I rolled onto it, I would wake up. Um, but, so then I had another uh, Patreon thing later in the afternoon uh, on Tuesday and I felt totally fine in the morning. My arm just hurt a little bit to, you know, lift it up or whatever. And then, like clockwork, right, lunchtime rolls around, whole body starts hurting. I am in incredibly fatigued and tired. And, uh, you know, by the afternoon, felt like trash. So, and then, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I felt weird at night. Um, and it got better if I just took some ibuprofen. So, but by, by Friday, I didn't feel anything. So, and I know it's totally random. You know, like my parents were cool. My mom felt bad the next day, but my dad felt nothing. Um, I had a friend that had a fever for three days, right? So it's it's totally different based on everybody. But the reaction that you're having is your body literally uh, taking the genetic information that it gives your, your body. And that's like its way of learning how to respond to the virus. So I'm not I'm not too bad, mad about feeling crappy for a couple days just because it's like, my body now knows uh, what's going on, so. But I'm happy. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it on a, on some other streams and like Patreon and stuff, but my um, gaming group and just my friends here in general, right, that I haven't seen in a long time um, since I moved to Texas. I saw most of them though at um, uh, my friend Ian's funeral. Um, and I know you guys know that. Uh, when that happened, because that's when I did his memorial piece um, for his, uh, it's the Reaper, ReaperCon Iconic, it's the one with the flaming sword. That's what I painted up in his memory for his D&D character. Um, but, so I saw most of them in October of 2019, but I hadn't seen any of them since, right? And we are now, everybody is going to be vaccinated by the end of the month. So we're all finally going to be able to uh, get together and hang out play games it's gonna be amazing our family got together for my grandfather's 92nd birthday for the first time in a year right he hadn't been he hadn't seen anybody and shout out to my grandpa too because like you know some parts of my family uh played the what's the big deal game with covid and they all got it at christmas <laughs> and and we didn't get together so nobody got sick um and then they quickly were like oh yeah that was probably dumb but he didn't go to anything. So like he constantly was shutting down people wanting to get together over the pandemic, but he's vaccined, everybody else is vaccinated. And uh, we all finally got together for his birthday. And that was, that was cool to be able to get together and see each other. So a little bit more normalcy in life. All right, I am pretty happy. I'm gonna go back over the, the center a little bit more, um, but otherwise our base coding is good. I don't care about anything else right now, just because uh, it's not important. The focus here today really is is manipulating the gold. So, but while this dries, I will grab our silver. I'm just trying to get this coverage over the stomach. Really nice. There we go. Cool. Number two, early April. Yeah, I figured I would rather do it early and just kind of like earlier in the day. 
and the way that they they were scheduling it, so um, it's done by a private lab, and they're doing mass vaccine events. So it was a ten thousand person event that we were a part of, and um, which is far superior than everywhere else in the state, where it's like good luck finding your second dose. Um, but uh, the first time around, we went. I'm grabbing the blade steel now, the silver. First time around, Cindy and I were separated about an hour apart, so I got mine first, and then we had to wait, and then she got hers, and then we had to drive all the way home, right? Um, but we learned through that experience that it didn't actually matter like when you were scheduled, so to speak. It, the, the, the scheduled times they gave you was just a way for them to manage 10,000 people. Um, funny enough, too, as it turns out, the uh, lab that did it, IMMY Labs, they, um, they hired the event people from Chick-fil-A, uh, to help them do their first event and then they use Chick-fil-A again based on that event to like figure out the changes they need to make for the one that we did and like it was I've never been a part of something so efficient in the way that the, the way that it was managed and actually our second dose was even faster <laughs> it literally it was just like boom I mean it was crazy the way that it worked in this huge auto, in huge convention center and like as soon as you walk in, sit down, you get your shot. That's like, literally you're just walking and then you wait 15 minutes. That's how fast it was. But for 10,000 people, it was crazy. But so, you know, it was really, really well done. And uh, we got really lucky, but definitely pleased. And they're doing more here finally. They're, they're doing some at like the state fairgrounds and different things like that. But so hopefully more and more people will be able to get it. But my parents did it through the state system because they got a Moderna shot. And uh, at the time, they were not allowing you to schedule your second dose, which is uh, extremely intelligent uh, when you got the Moderna one. So they had to wait and try daily to get an appointment. Luckily for us, uh, I got the Pfizer. And, uh, you know, you just showed up and then they're like, see you in three weeks. So it was just a part of the deal. But yeah, when we did that first event, we, we were spaced out an hour, and then the second one we were spaced out even further, but we realized we could just go at the same time because they didn't actually check like when you were supposed to be there. And so we just went in, no big deal, same time, got it done first thing in the morning, and then that way I could just like relax the rest of the day. But like I said, I definitely by lunch started feeling uh, achy all over. But I'm very glad to be able to start licking doorknobs again I mean, most of you know, uh, along with painting miniatures, my other passion in life is doorknob licking from movie theaters to malls to Denny's at five in the morning. That has always been my life's true passion. So now that I can safely feel like I can do that again, um, I'm very pleased, so. But, very happy. So we're doing pretty much every other object on this outfit. And our, our wonderful silver here. Obviously the uh, glass on the on the helmet is not going to be silver, but, uh, and the face, etc. I actually like this face a lot too. It's, it's uh, pretty simple to paint. But. Let's do the shoulder pad here. I don't know if I was supposed to be <laughs> silver right there. That's fine. Let's go ahead and hit the uh, shoulder pads. To, or not, sorry, elbow. And we should be safe here. I'll hit this with the airbrush too, just to make sure we're all dry.
I'm gonna grab, um, what do, we, what, do we, what do we want? Let's grab Barbarian Flesh. We'll base cut skin. You enjoy the article on elevator buttons for Doorknob Lickin' Monthly. I don't know how to read, so I don't know what a magazine is because I'm dumb and I got a macaroni picture on construction paper for a brain. Um, but that sounds cool. I've heard of magazines before. I don't know what they look like though. All right, so we'll coat her face with this nice little barbarian charcoal mask. Elevator number 13, the rarest one. Yeah, can we just talk about how, think about going to a hotel. Let's just say, hold on, hold on. Imagine going to a hotel where you pay, let's say, $500, $700 a night. Okay, we're gonna move this. Five, $700 a night, and it's got stars, right? Which usually just means the ballets aren't jerks. So, you know, you pay more money, you go to a really nice hotel, and you're like, man, this place is super classy. Like, I'm so glad that I can afford this beautiful room. It's gonna be such a nice vacation. And you get into the elevator, and you realize they don't have a 13th floor, because it's spooky. Real spooky, guys. Can't have a 13th floor. <laughs> that always cracks me up. Anytime a hotel, I'm like, oh. <laughs> you you built a built a $20 million hotel, but you made sure. Can't put that 13 on the buttons, uh-uh. All right, let's lay this on here. If you look at the handles after reading something like Dragon Con or Reaper Con, you may get a buzz. Yeah, or you'll get like, you know, a clogged artery. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I can't speak for Dragon Con though. Reaper Con, at least if it was, if you're if you're looking to doorknobs at Reaper Con from 2019, you may have uh, maybe a little taste of gokujang right some like korean flavor from the korean bowl uh food truck that was out there it may taste like 20 dollars nachos from the hotel restaurant you never know maybe you'll get lucky maybe it's maybe it tastes like the special ice cream that they had at the uh, the little fake starbucks or i guess it was a starbucks <laughs> trash that's funny All right, we got that. What color should we do the bandana? We did green the first time around. I mean, we can, we can stick with the green. It's fine. So I'll do uh, wilderness green here. What I really liked about ReaperCon was like, uh, I feel like Friday night, everybody was really taking class. Well, I take it all back. I don't think anything will ever beat me bringing the bottle of rosé in the gold bottle to the Wednesday night pizza party. <laughs> that still cracks me up. And trying to offer it to uh, to Ron and Adrian. <laughs> I remember Ron looked at me. He like, he, at first he didn't understand what I was saying. I was like, hey, you want some champagne? And he's like, he was like, uh, what? Like he didn't, he didn't put two and two together. And he was like, I, th I think I'm okay. And then he looks down at the table and he realizes like I literally brought champagne. He was like, oh, okay, this is cool. I forget who I sat with. I think I sat with Patreon people. Actually, I think that is what went down. It was Patreon people and then uh, Mark and Kim from Frozen Ninja. And then I think some people that I just like didn't know but, but now I do know. I didn't, but now I do. It's usually how conventions go. All right, we're cool. We're cool with all this. I can, we can, we can shade down from here. Look at the shininess of this gold, though, right? This is like the shininess of this gold is like fake, fake.
fake pirate coins from the dollar store, right? Like we want that super shiny, super shininess here. And I'm gonna grab some Geraldo Rivera red here as we begin the tinting journey. Just gonna make a little, little glaze arena here. Those pirate coins are fake. Yeah, didn't you watch the uh, South Park about it? Oh, wait, I should, before I just dive right in. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> She's an aquanaut. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm gonna hit it with the airbrush uh, just to make sure it's dry. It looks dry. I'm not seeing anything move and it cracks. Not seeing anything move in the cracks. It's like when you buy a uh, sofa from Goodwill. You gotta make sure those bed bugs aren't in there. <laughs> Getting a refund. Oh, even though I have to say, so because I'm so excited about being able to play D&D again with my friends, all that good stuff, I've been really, really trying to make the experience fun and uh i did the thing where you buy actual coins like real metal coins for all the currency and they showed up today i'm very excited about it i don't think any of them watch the show so i can i can always talk about stuff and it won't spoil the fun even though of course i say that and one of them will be like sending me a message about it but I think it'll be fun. I'm, I always, uh, anytime with D&D games and stuff, I always make my players really poor and everything pretty expensive. So I don't need a ton of coins. And sometimes too, this is the first time we're ever gonna play where we actually use all of the types of currency, including like Electrum, whatever that is. I feel like Electrum in D&D is the same as somebody like telling you, oh, you, you loot the goblin's body and in his one tattered pocket, you find a, a Bitcoin, right? Like it's, that to me never seemed like a real piece of currency, but we're gonna play with all of them. Usually, usually what I do is like, we don't even have copper or, or, or silver or anything like that. We just have gold, you know? Like everything's gold. You find a bunch of gold, everything costs gold. But this time around we're doing, doing the real deal. Real deal currency extravaganza. All right, so I've got some heraldic red here. Electrum is just D&D Bitcoin, it's true, man. Yeah, Nomad, so that, so <laughs> since I can't spend like $500 getting, you know, 100 plus of every single coin, right? Or whatever it would cost. That's my plan is like in any instance where I can keep them from having a gold, I'll give them two Electrum first, right? Like that's kind of my, my idea, but. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more, a little bit more of this mix up. This looks good. Okay. So, similarly to what we did before, it's gonna be darker towards the base and the feet. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this more so as a wash rather than a glaze. So I want this to pool a little bit from the knees down. Same thing towards the back of the legs. Now remember, we will uh, glaze using the same gold on top of everything as well. So we'll, we'll be in control of the, the colors here a little bit more than just like slamming it all on top. But you just, you just gotta trust the process here. Okay, this time around I'm pulling it down from the top of the thigh, so you can see it already creates kind of a gradient. In between the plating here, the creases. A little like that. 
up underneath the arm. Underneath her barnacles here. I mean, look at it already. This is this is sick, right? I feel like a lot of people are, are so afraid to add color to metallics, and I feel like that is just a crime, and you should be locked up for years. But I feel like you should be afraid to do that. You should you should always always be prepared to tint and glaze your metals because you'll get an awesome result. Hey, thanks for the Raid Arena. Solid 20 piece. Solid 20 piece. Going up in between the cracks here on the different bits and bobs. Just using the tip of the brush. Again, right, the paint is a wash consistency, so it allows me to sort of just like aim with whatever I'm looking to get into there. around the fangus side of the domey here now we are going to darken this a little bit more i know i had said purple but we may actually do maybe a brown i don't know we'll see but i do like the intensity we have right now it's pretty crazy but i do want to dull it slightly so we will end up going with a i'm thinking a brown again from the top of the thigh pulling down towards the knee help create a gradient there I feel like color glazing as well helps you, I don't know, you know, in a, in a miniature painting life journey or whatever, as you start building up more skills and this, that, and the other, you know, everybody will get to the point to where they're like, yo, I can just, uh, you know, they're like, I just applied a wash on top of everything, whatever, whatever. And it always dulls things down to an extent. And then it's just your job to layer back on top, all that good stuff. But it, Sometimes it, it kind of creates like a guaranteed level of contrast that you can't escape. Like a, a very overall level that you will always have because of the pre-made mixes that you're using. Obviously, you guys have watched me enough that you know I, I don't do that. And it's usually a different color that we already have on the palette every single time. But it does sort of trap you in a box of being victim to just like whatever washes that you like using the most. And I understand for consistency or, or speed, it's always good. But at the same time, you guys know how fast we knock out paint jobs here. So like, you know, I feel like it isn't a super limiting factor, but it doesn't dull things down as much. So I just ordered like six more minis. Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those numbers up. No, I'm kidding. At this point, I, I, you know, the Reaper website for me hit the level of, of being sad because like I know everything that's on it, <laughs> right? Like I know everything that's on it. I own pretty much everything I ever would want, which you guys know is, is more than anybody really should have. So now for me, it's always the new releases. That's, that's where it gets dangerous for me. Like, ooh, something I haven't seen. Going back to the barnacles a little bit. All right, so we're cool. I think we're ready to go to go deeper. We're gonna dive into the shadows, get it? <laughs> Cause it's, it's underwater. All right, so I think we're gonna do, now we could do green, which I know is a little bit wonky, so we probably won't. Uh, I'm gonna grab our, is this actually a pull up? I always confuse whether this is a part of the painting kit or not, and it's my fault because I don't put it either far enough away from the other Miniature Monday paints or whatever. So uh, I will take I will take complete 
haberdashery of that mistake. All right, where are we at? Let's go down. Where is... Where is this kit? What is happening? Bro, what? Where is just the paints? Oh, right here. Okay. Oh my god. Where's this image? Okay, yeah, so we're doing uh, Nut Brown. <laughs> it's always good to have a job to be able to buy minis. All right. So I'm gonna put some of this out on the Polito. And just like we did before, this will become a glaze. Now this, all this is gonna do, this is already a warm tone color, so it's not really gonna do much stuff in terms of like moving away from our brown, or sorry, our red. But what it will do is it will neutralize the red a little bit so that things aren't so in your face, bright red, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm looking to apply this in the exact same way that we did before to pretty much 50% of the surface area that we did the first time around. I know math is hard, what that means is just go about halfway uh, as much as you did the first time around. You can already tell, right, that it dulls out that red glare. Good little trick. It's a way that you can ensure the colors that you're looking for and then tone them back appropriately so without just applying black, right, or something like that. If we had gone green, we would have used a lot less of the pigment. You can go way thinner. Uh, because anytime green hits on top of a red or any warm color, it's going to look more like a shadow rather than like, ooh wee, it's green, where's the broccoli? So. This time around too, I feel like I was much cleaner uh, in terms of the application. So this is still very shiny, right? And that's kind of the whole goal. I don't want to, I want to leave this super, super shiny. I want it to be very shiny armor. You know, if she's if she's gonna go into the deep end of the swimming pool, everyone will be able to see her. I do think it's funny that she's an elf, but she has like this breathing apparatus. I mean, wouldn't there be some kind of just herb they can smoke or put in a potion or something that, I'm an elf, now I can breathe underwater. I don't know. We won't, we won't question things too much. It's a chronoscope mini, so you already know it's uh, allowed to be more fun than normal. That should be the tagline for all chronoscope miniatures. Chronoscope, it's more fun than normal. I am gonna hit the uh, top of the thigh here in the back just to dull down the reflection since it is underneath a butt shadow. Which, complimentary speaking, right, should exist. No, no shade. I'm on a roll. What it is is the, uh... I had a liquid IV right before we got started. One of the matcha ones that they have with, like, caffeine and all that good stuff, so... I am hydrated and uh, firing on all cylinders. Wow, thanks Reaper for the tier one gift sub to us for that guy. Remember, you can always sub for free using that sweet, sweet Jeff Bezos money if you've got Amazon Prime. You can hit that sub button, connect your account, and give those dollars over this way, or to your favorite Twitch streamer, whoever that is, but it'd be cool if it was us, I'm sure. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of black, just to go slightly darker. I wanna separate some of the some of the same samey nature underneath the armpits there, so I'm gonna grab the black, and we will do that. We'll also then use this dark brown color that we're using to shade down all of the metallics that we have left, so all of the silvers. Now, I am slightly dumb because I was using one good brush and one crappy brush. Now I can't tell the difference. It's kind of funny that one of these is crappy and one of them isn't because they both look pretty okay. So we're just gonna forget. We're gonna get lost in the sauce and see what happens. So I'm gonna add two tipfuls into the brown. You can see how much darker that made it. The 
should work out for us pretty well. If not, I will go darker. But we're gonna go right up in the center of the legs. Like so. Right here where the helmet is touching the middle of the body, I wanna make that darker. We just want to differentiate between the two areas a little bit more. I'm going to get a little bit more black there. There we go. There we go. So we definitely helped out in those areas. I'm going to put a little bit more uh, right here in the hipper area. There we go. All right. So all those areas that are a little bit more defined and across this, so like right here, right, where it's all very similar in between the helmet and everything, we'll do the same thing. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more black to where it's just a super dark brown. Turn this into a wash, and this is going to go all over the me metallic silver, like so. Put a little bit more here because it's dry. I'm going up under the neck, and I think, for the most part here, that's, that's pretty good. Do the feet a little bit, behind the knees. A little bit underneath the barnacles. A little bit more contrast there. All right. I mean, uh, that's some pretty, uh, pretty shiny, uh, pretty shiny stuff there. Definitely not uh, upset about it. I think it looks good. Sorry, I heard things, heard things beeping in my ear that you can't hear. Maybe you can hear. What? For organization, should you combine your skeletons and zombies? Uh, or organization for what? I think would be my immediate question. So I'm gonna take a little bit of our uh, barbarian skin, some of the some of the heraldic red, a little bit of that brown, make a nice, nice deep rosy color. This is gonna be the wash on our skin. Looks good. Pretty same same as the uh, color underneath, but it'll be okay. We will highlight away there. I need to. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that wash on the uh, shoulders. I feel like they're kind of hurting. A little bit more black. I would like to have a, a difference in material between the silver and the gold. So the silver is 
much uh, more shaded or dull rather more more matte more dim not as smart all right cool Trying to make more room for more minis. Um, you can just do what I do and leave all your miniatures in the toilet when you're not using them. And you'll always know they're clean. All right, I think we're cool. I think we can start highlighting up gently on the gold. So we can do that. I'm gonna get, uh, I'm actually just gonna get all new gold out here in general. The gold tends to separate on wet palettes, right? So you don't wanna necessarily jump back in. All right. Boom, we don't need a lot. This will be pretty thin. So I'm doing the thing where I just pull with the very tip of my brush. I don't want my brush flooded at all, right? So just on the tip there, nice and thin. And that will allow me to go back in and highlight things in a layering sense. I know people are always afraid to go back and highlight metallics with thin paint, but it works. Just gotta believe. Up underneath the belly there. Or wait, what? <laughs> Above the belly, sorry. Top edges of some of these details that we have uh, obfuscated through our washing. As you can see, we're gonna pick some of them out. Starting to get boogers on the brush, which tells me I need to clean it. You will get brush boogers way faster with thin metallic. So do keep that in mind. Word to the wizened. Keep a lookout. Coming down from the top of the arm here onto the forearm to create more of a gradient. But look at that. See how shiny it is? This is like the, the fake trophy your dad got you after your team didn't win Little League and he gave it to you at CeCe's when no one was looking, right? When you went there for pizza. I feel like that's probably a really, really Texas reference. All right, now I did the kneecaps silver first time around. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna do them in gold. Even though we did the elbows, look, we're not, look, I'm not trying to make sense here. I'm just trying to paint, all right? So we're gonna do it this way. Just separate it out enough to look good. bottom on the shin there by the feet only because uh, I would assume it would catch a little bit of light cool hop around the back all right so I'll do the bottom edge here of this leg bottom edge of this leg Highlighting from the top down. See that? Now it's very shiny. T 
top down, simple enough. I'm gonna go for the back of the hand area here. This is already pretty bright. We didn't really wash that down much. Top of the helmet into this arm. I got brush boogers, I gotta clean. Don't wanna don't wanna be my own worst enemy here with the brush, so. I feel like I need to do uh, more here. Top of this leg. There we go. I'm going super thin with this paint too. The metallic. You know what's crazy? I saw a video because I just can't help myself <clears throat> with some things. I watched a video with this guy that was like explaining a wet palette and he literally told <laughs> part of the video was to soak your parchment, the baking paper for five minutes in hot water. Which is funny, right? Because that doesn't actually do anything. If you're using like the uh, Masterson's paper, that's that's when you need to do that to reactivate it. But if you have a super wet palette sheet, if you're using Masterson's Stay Wet paper, and you're not using the same paper that I use, and you're using metallics this way, you will most likely have problems, um, just because it will absorb in, and then all you're gonna have left are the metallic flakes on top because they're they're uh, larger, they're chunkier, so they won't get absorbed. And uh, this, this type of highlighting may be problematic. So if you use a different kind of wet palette where that is the issue, um, just grab anything else, right? So grab like a paper plate, styrofoam plate, um, top of a, a plastic sprue, something that gives you a slick surface to work on. So that way you can just get super thinned, wet metallic paint and you'll be okay, right? The, the only fear here is having it absorb into something. So if you use the Masterson paper, um, I think the Everlasting Wet Palette paper is similar, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Or, well, I know one of them is. Between them and the, is it Game Envy, I think is the other brand that has like a, an easy enough to buy one. So keep that in mind. That's the only real difference. You could dry brush too. Obviously gonna be messy uh, in terms of control, but it will work for you equally so. All right, boom, there you go. I like that. We may go in some purple here at the very end, but we'll see if we need to. Now then, let's highlight up our silver. It looks like the silver is okay. I will do a little test application here on the thick portion of the harpoon gun. Yeah, it's fine. It is fine, so we're gonna highlight that up a little bit too. Moving down the edges, that's really all I care about with this shape, just because it's an intriguing shape. That way too, we're able to retain some of the shadow, depending on the angle. Remember, if you ever want to see any of the stuff that I use, and you want to throw me a couple pennies as well, you can do uh what is it exclamation point josh's things check out the amazon shop anything listed there if you purchase it or if you just go to that link in general and buy something else random i do get a kickback on that which does help me out i don't i don't i haven't been pushing it as much uh recently i, sh I should be i'm i'm not rich i can use all the help i can get <laughs> but it definitely helps out you can also get the link directly on the website minipainting.studio remember to check out the shop um, I still need to upload the stuff for March this month, but this month has just been insane. This week is going to be really difficult. If you message me for some reason or something this week, like, give me some time, because um, I have an insane amount of work to do. But as a gesture of goodwill, if you would like, I'm pretty sure you can still use the code Josh's Things. Or, sorry, not Josh's Things. <laughs> I just saw, I saw Justin put that in there. Um, you can use the code FROZEN at checkout on the website and get $5 off your order if you would like to do that. 
but definitely check that out. Um, I'm still at a high per, uh, turnaround time, probably to midweek, and then everything will get back to that three to five day turnaround time on orders. Really, if you put something in today, it'll probably ship out like Saturday. Saturday or Monday of next week. Depending on the size of the order, of course. If you order something tea tiny, then I can probably get it out faster. But big thanks to everybody too that helped out this month. Um, we have crazy electric bills as a result of those winter storms that came through. Oklahoma had two of them uh, split like right in the middle of the month when we have our billing cycle. So it's been a slight nightmare. It's like an extra $600 worth of, of electric bill. But so any, any three printed purchases help me out a ton. So definitely a big thank you. And then, of course, if you don't care about miniatures because you have too many and you're dying under the intense amounts of pressure and guilt that you get from all of the stares the miniatures give you from the, the pile of shame, uh, check out the Patreon. That's the best way to support me. Patreon.com slash studio. Check out everything we got going on. Like I said, we have another class this weekend. Over 80 hours of content just waiting for you. Just waiting for you. As soon as you join, you get the you get access to the vault, all the other stuff that I leave up for people indefinitely. It's like you move into a neighborhood and every neighbor brings you a bottle of paint, right? Like that's, it's very welcoming. All kinds of stuff to do. So much so people have complained. They haven't really complained, but people, I don't know why, I don't want to use the uh, handle right now, but people have said like, there's so much stuff to do on there. All right, so. We can do either the lens, or not the lens, but the glass, or the, let's do, let's do the face. We can do the face. Do we have the next miniature Monday minis posted somewhere? Nope. That'll probably be another week or so for me to be able to do that. Or well, assuming, like, I probably won't be able to get them done this week, so I would expect to hear about them next week, most likely. That's just kind of how everything has, has played out. So I'm gonna grab some white and we will just highlight up the skin directly from the Barbarian Tone. All right, so. Let's get this a little bit brighter and see how we're looking. Look at that gradient though on the armor, it's so cool. All right, same technique we always do, corner of the eyes, down the side of the nose, corner of the mouth. Go for the nose first. Not too bad. I feel like we could do the top of the brow, but let's see. I just didn't know how much shadow sort of the, uh, bandana would give us. All right, we're doing cool. So we'll do the next side here. What did I do on the lip there? All right, that's fine, we can fix that. All right, so now I'm gonna use the uh, Barbarian Flesh or whatever to highlight up like down the edges of the jaw and everything like that. We'll go ahead and get the ears poking out from the hair. And we'll do some lip color. All right, so I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. A little bit, here, let's mess around. I'm gonna add some red, here we go. And then I'm gonna use this to kind of bridge the brighter color to the shadow there. Ooh. 
a little bit brighter. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. There it is. That's the color I was looking for, so that's good. Do this side of the jaw. There's more hair on that side of the face, so really we just need to clean up the lip. But let's just do like a darker red. On the bottom lip here. Ooh. That works, so now we can clean up around the chin and everything. See, I'm gonna go right above that. Right here. I'm actually surprised at how far away I'm holding this. <laughs> Normally I have it a little bit closer. All right, so that should be okay for us before we move in and do anything else. I don't wanna to go too bright, right? Cause we haven't done the bandana and we haven't done the um, hair or anything like that, but that should be okay for us. If we compare the two, I went much paler the first time around, so. Okay. I'm gonna take our brown. I'll go ahead and base coat the hair. Thanks for the group, monkeys. I don't know if that's the bandana piece or if that's the band. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's all right. We'll get there, we'll get there. I feel like I want to um, make this darker right, right by the shoulder blade. Let's see if we can get a thin little line work going. As as much I hate on uh, lining, as much as I hate on it, we sh we should do a little bit like right here. Help push the contrast there. Okay, cool. All right, so let's do our. Let's do the uh, bandana before we highlight the rest of the hair. So I'm gonna take that green, a little bit of white over here. I'm going for texture on the highlight. All right, I like that. So now what I'm gonna do is get a little bit more 
but much thinner. I'm glazing this up towards the top, and that way it will help uh, break apart the brush stroke. Any hard edges that I may have, right? I can dull very quickly and simply, as you can tell. And I kind of want to tint that like a little bit. <clears throat> Let me look over here. I'm gonna take candlelight yellow as well. Oops, I'm knocking over minis in front of me. Very gently in a glaze, mixed with that green. To the brightest part of our green, I want, to, or like where the highlight would be, is where I'm gonna glaze the yellow. I would rather it look like a warm highlight rather than like a pastel. And that'll just be a nice little color shift. Very subtle, but enough to make a difference. A little, little something like that. There you go. Now you can tell. All right. So now, why don't we do our lens? How do I do it the first time? Pretty basic. Yeah. So I'm going to mix up a gray. The area that we're painting in, like the little panels, are pretty small. So it's not going to be uh, like an amazing glass rendition here, but. Pretty much going for outlines. Painting glass is very similar to non-metallic metal principles, right? Like you're always looking for edges, outlines, and volumes. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty simple. Find it a little bit further. Oh, I need to take a drink. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat. Now I'm gonna take some blue, mix it with white. And I'm gonna really aim for the top edge of each section. Luckily too, right, you do have this little edge that I've left that we need to paint silver. So you can literally just push the tip of your brush to that edge. And then now I'm just gonna take white.
I'm just kind of putting it in the corners. Everywhere else, that way we can clean it back up. So now I do have black on the palette. Let me get that real nice and thin. So I can use my brush uh, like a pen or something, right? Just looking to use the end of it. And then I'll resharpen all of our like edges and then we'll go back to some silver. Okay, and then at the center here, I had done like a gauge. So I'm gonna paint this black and then we'll just paint it white. I mean, there's not really a, enough room for us to do much else. Look at this crazy Arthur hair right here. How funny. Okay, I'm gonna take that blue that I had really, really thin and uh, put it in the bottom section of each of these panels too. And that way uh, we'll get some kind of oceany color. Okay, panel in the center, we're just gonna do straight up white. see oh i just made it look like a okay <laughs> i just made it look like some kind of jam or jewels that's fine so i'll just add a little circle here with a lighter blue kind of like the bottom but you can't even tell actually i'll go back to the darker blue then bottom bottom right hand corner we'll just make dark blue Going back into the blue here on the other panel. Really more pigmented on the bottom. And then the silver, I may need more new silver, we'll see. Boom. All right, then let's do the hair. I did uh, red hair. Air quotes, red hair. So I'm gonna take uh, sunrise orange. Sunrise orange. And I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of white just so it has better coverage. The white really is just acting as a like pigment filler and not necessarily a way to increase the highlight. More Arthur Hair attacks. I'm gonna go for the top of the strands, pretty much wherever the light is hitting most, and then we'll glaze back on top with orange. 
I always find that makes a more realistic, like, redhead, quote-unquote. You kind of go, like, a blonder direction first on top of a brown, and then glaze with orange, and it'll look a little bit less uh, cartoon orange hair. Unless you want that, then by all means. Do what you enjoy. All right, we got that. So then now I'm taking the orange, thin down like a glaze, and going back in. And honestly, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the red because this orange is very light. There we go. I want like blood orange color for the glaze. That way it will still show some of the highlight orange or like the very lighter color we did first. What you can do as well on the uh, helmet, if you would like, you can add some reflective dots. So like, I'm gonna do that here in the center portion as well. Okay, and that is pretty much it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the process. Obviously, like I said too, right, if you wanted to have your armor be much more red, you can see I highlighted down the legs more the first time around I did it. If you want the legs and everything, you know, anything that we did to be more saturated, just don't go back with the brown that we used. Um, that's probably the easiest thing you can do, but beyond that, really, uh, it's all about just glazing, shading down the orange, or not the orange, sorry, the red on the metallic and then dulling that red with the use of a brown. But not too bad for what, hour and a half? That's pretty good. Um, next week we'll be painting up the last guy here. Next Monday. And uh, like I said as well, we will have the next set of minis available for you probably by the end of next week um, is when I'll be able to get all that done, photographed and all that good stuff. But Beyond that, that will be it for today. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. If I don't see you, um, I might stream something <coughs> tomorrow. <coughs> Ooh, probably uh, I'll do Wednesday, probably midday I'll be able to do something, but not Wednesday evening. And then of course, like I said, we're doing our color theory class on Patreon this Saturday for the $10 and up tier as well. So big thanks everybody for hanging out. I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Justin, do you have anything for us? I do not. He's got nothing. All right. Well, that sounds good. Um, do we have a rating target at all? Or Yes. Yes. We're going to be rating Playing in the Mud. Okay. Sounds good. Playing in the Mud. Awesome, folks. All right. Have a good week, everybody. And I will see you next time. See you tomorrow, guys.